All right, hello everybody, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us on the webinar. This is the third in our series of Wikiloo webinars. Um, just to let you know, this webinar will be recorded, and all of you will receive a recording afterwards as well. Um, so if you have any questions during the webinar, you can go ahead and type those in. Over on the right-hand side, it's under the settings panel. If you can't see it right now, um, you should be able to click on that orange arrow and it'll pop out. So we'll go ahead and do questions at the end. Go ahead and type them anytime, and we'll get to those uh, when the webinar is finished. Our next session is going to be on July 13th. Or we'll go ahead and continue the series. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Rebecca Monet, and we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks, Chris. Good morning, everyone. So we continue on this um, idea of no more looking loose. This being our third session. So for those of you that um, haven't had a chance to attend our first couple, of course, there are recordings uh, both on our YouTube channel and feel free to reach out to us directly and we can uh, help you get a link to be able to listen to it. But let's do a quick uh, review of what we've been talking about. This whole idea of moving people through a process to buying a business, buying a franchise, and what prevents them from doing so and the process that could help get more people past this looky-looism and into uh, a curiosity zone and the idea of buying a business. So we all have a comfort zone that we live and operate by. What creates that comfort zone is a wall of fear that prevents us from stepping out and doing things that are different or, or outside of our normal way of living our lives or creating an income. So this wall of fear holds us in. So the idea is how do we get people out of that comfort zone on top of that wall of fear, even climbing it and moving over it, and into this curiosity zone and into this learning zone where they're open to uh, purchasing a business. So when we look at the word curiosity, basically curiosity is that urge that draws us out of our comfort zone, and fear is that agent that keeps us within its boundaries. So our job as franchise brokers, franchise development folks, franchise marketers, is to encourage curiosity so we can come above that uh, wall of fear and um, move into a uh, place where we're pondering the idea of buying a business. So um, there are two primary motives that will have someone move into uh, curiosity and into learning and into pondering buying a business. First, it's the values of that individual. Values are the prime directives or the motive or the psychological drivers that cause all of our behaviors. It really is truly the only true predictor of behavior is what somebody's values are. And our values will dictate what motivates us. So we can get people over that wall of fear into curiosity, learning about our business opportunity by stimulating their values, which is what we're going to talk about today. Last session, we talked about triggering fear and how fear actually can create a level of curiosity if stimulated well. Fear can also have someone pull back, but fear also creates a level of let's investigate, let's look at things. So there's two faces to fear. The one that has us withdraw and, and become a possum or flee, and another one that has us fight. So if we're in the process of looking at a business and we are triggered by fear, um, sometimes we'll go right back into that comfort zone and hold up. But the kind of fear we talked about in our last session is the kind of fear that you can trigger through your marketing efforts and your sales efforts that has you uh, encourage your prospective franchisee to investigate. What is that bump in the night? I want to check it out. So we don't want to trigger the fear that causes someone to flee or to fight and go back to a comfort zone, but instead to investigate. So let's dig more deeply into 
this idea of a comfort zone. No doubt you've already figured out that a comfort zone, it has various sizes depending on an individual. Some of us have large comfort zones in terms of our ability to take a risk. Others of us have very small comfort zones. But we do know comfort zone affects every single area of our life and specifically in the area of considering buying a, a business. So what I can tell you about this comfort zone, there are two primary um, ways that people operate to kind of bang up to the edges of that comfort zone and step out to a place of taking a risk, to a place of learning, to a place of curiosity. And one is by looking towards the goals, towards the uh, results, towards the benefits of taking that risk. So we are willing to get out of our comfort zone if indeed we can see that the benefits, the results of doing so outweigh the pain or discomfort of still being within that comfort zone. So we might call this a carrot, right? These are the values that we can dangle in front of someone to tempt them to come out of the comfort zone and to begin to be curious and investigate. Last session we talked about how to do that through fear. This session we're going to talk about how to do that through values. Now, of course, there are some folks, the only way you get them out of their comfort zone is by inflicting pain, by showing them all the horrible things that they want to get away from, a controlling boss, not being respected, not having enough freedom. So some of that, again, we addressed in the last session, and I want to address it a little bit further in this session. So it's kind of that carrot versus stick idea. The stick being the fears and all the values and motives that get people out of their comfort zone that actually inflict some level of pain or discomfort uh, before someone does something. So think of it in terms of uh, having a weight problem. For someone, they may not do something about being overweight until their blood pressure goes up or until they've been humiliated or embarrassed. That would be considered a stick that motivated them to do something. A carrot, on the other hand, could be um, I'm going to look fantastic and I'm going to um, be able to wear that great dress or I'm going to be able to walk into that party and be, you know, the belle of the ball, so to speak. So the carrot versus the stick. So bottom line, what we want to consider here is the smaller the comfort zone, the faster someone can take action. Please take note of that. The smaller the comfort zone, the faster this prospect is going to take action. If they are sitting on a pile of cash in their bank account, they have a cushy job or their spouse has a cushy job, and there's really nothing that's motivating them or driving them or any great value for them to do anything different, that it's just, you know, I'm going to check out a business and maybe if something hits me the right way, I will look at it more seriously, then the likelihood is their decision is going to be um, long in the coming. So we want to get their comfort zone as small as possible, as fast as possible. And so the question then might be, how do we do that? How do we make this comfort zone smaller so they take faster action? I'm sure you've had prospective franchisees where they have this huge comfort zone, sitting on a lot of cash, sitting on a job, uh, having a spouse that's still working, no real pain motivators, no real value motivators that are uh, moving them down the path. So how do we reduce that comfort zone where they make a decision in the next three, six, uh, three to six months versus we're having them in the uh, pipeline for two years, right, uh, and possibly uh, not making a decision at all. So there are four primary ways. One is, of course, create curiosity. We're going to talk about that every single time and give you uh, more tips and tricks around that. Two is to leverage your values. All decisions come from our values. Values create our motives. So if we understand their values, we understand how to motivate them either through pain or through pleasure. Third, we trigger just enough fear 
that it creates this investigative side of us where we're curious about something. Not so much fear that they withdraw and go back into the comfort zone, but instead they step out and they become curious. Fourth, we build confidence. And confidence is built through a learning process. And we're going to talk a little bit about that today and address it again in uh, the fourth session. So if you're more interested in the curiosity and triggering fear pieces, go back and listen to session one and session two. Today, let's talk about motives. Let's talk about drivers and what can be done to leverage those drivers and leverage those values based on your unique uh, uh, persona of your prospective franchisee. The first persona is what we call a belonger persona. Um, this is a Stanford research a model that I'm sharing with you. And the idea is that the belonger is motivated, makes all his decisions around family, security, team, God, country, loyalty, dependability, consistency. All of his decisions, how he spends his time, money, and energy, and things that he's going to be curious about and things that he's going to be interested in will be based around these kinds of values. These values will drive them to make their day-to-day -day decisions and move them through their due diligence process. The more you can trigger these values and the more you can dangle using a carrot these values, the more they're going to stay engaged in the process and not go south. Additionally, if we don't provide these values to the belonger, then they go south. If they can't see that being in your organization it makes them feel like they're part of an extended family or that they're part of a team or that your business is one that can provide them security or there's some longevity to your business where they can feel safe and secure, they're going to go south. They're not going to be engaged. They're not going to be curious enough to uh, look at your concept uh, any uh, further. So some of the things that you can leverage um, in terms of dangling these values is when, if indeed the belonger is your ideal prospective franchisee or you're dealing with them as a franchise broker and you're trying to place them in the right concept, is you want to look at what motivates and drives them, including things like safety and dependability. So in that case, in our marketing efforts, in our sales efforts, in our storytelling, we're going to talk about things uh, that the blonger is interested in, that this is a proven concept. It's got some historical basis. It is a hands-on business. It's a relationship business. It's a business where we're part of a team, a part of a family, or we can include our family. So when you're looking at your marketing, you're looking at your sales process, you are highlighting these values of proven, practical, team, family, consistency, safety, dependability, loyalty, hard work, kind of feeling. So that, that what we're building around them is a carrot that is so large that they step out of that comfort zone of keeping that nine to five job and say, you know what, if I step into this idea of buying a business or at least become curious enough to investigate it, I can see that this business provides me security, safety, team, family. Um, so all of our marketing and all of our uh, sales approaches should be triggering these values in the belonger. If you're talking about things that are off value, off purpose, inconsistent with the belonger, they don't even hear you. If you're a belonger, you can relate to this. If you're not a belonger, you can relate to this. That if somebody's talking about these values and it's not who you are, it kind of like duck on the waters. Uh, excuse me, a water on a duck's back. This um, slide here, I want to just bring up very quickly. Um, we addressed some of this in our last session, but we, we talked about triggering through a carrot approach these values, but we also want to trigger some of the fears, making sure it's just enough that it creates curiosity, but not so much that they go back 
into their comfort zone. The fears, of course, for the belonger were his fear of being separated from family, that we were putting him in a business where he uh, can't go to Johnny's soccer game. We don't want to be demonstrating that through marketing or through our sales uh, process. Or his inability to provide for his family, where we're putting any of his life savings or home at risk. We want to avoid any of that being triggered. Um, and we also want to make sure that we're cautious about showing uh, a sense of team and or triggering how he or she does not have that sense of team or that sense of family or the sense of consistency or the sense of stability within his current situation, current business, current job, whatever he is doing. So I wanted to give you a quick example of what this looks like. And this is actually uh, one that Chris pulled up for us the other day. So I really appreciate that, Chris. Um, to leverage these values and to stimulate curiosity. When you get a moment, go to YouTube and pull up the Budweiser Born the Hard Way commercial and just really pay attention to it in that it clearly demonstrates a marketing campaign directed at this belonger. It is all about hard work. It's all about tradition. It's all about history. You can see right here, we got a business plan written out in an old book that is yellowed and crumpled up in this screenshot. But the whole uh, commercial is around longevity, which creates safety. It's about doing it together. Almost every shot is a shot of several men and people coming together to build this Budweiser uh, brand that they have. So when you get a moment, check it out. Even the title, Born the Hard Way, triggers the uh, belonger because for them it's about hard work. It's about commitment. It's about doing day in and day out what is right to build that business. So if you look at this commercial, it'll give you an idea of how marketers today are triggering through everything from language to music to colors to messaging, uh, the values that will engage a particular audience. As a franchisor, knowing who your audience is, who your ideal candidate is, will allow you then to have your marketing and, and sales efforts be more consistent with that. So let's talk about the achiever. Uh, the achiever is a whole nother kind of persona or individual. And this persona may or may not be a good fit in your franchise organization, but he values things like power, control, uh, residual income, growth. He wants to be with a company or uh, provide a product or service that is unique, has, uh, has a very high quality to it. So for him, it's about being respected. After all, he's earned that respect. He's had some success. It's not just about winning, but it's about being the best in his mind. And so this is what drives every decision, every penny he spends, every uh, ounce of time he puts out there is based on what these motivators are, these drivers are. So when we are working with our prospective franchisee, we're going to be showing them in our sales process and in our marketing process ways that echo back these values if indeed the achiever is the ideal uh, candidate for you. So we're going to show them things like uh, the quality of our company, the uniqueness of our product or service um, by possibly doing some compare uh, contrast. We're going to show him how he can replicate either by showing him other franchisees who've opened a second or a third unit or created another vertical that they could go into market for. We're going to show them how they can grow and achieve um, through our marketing, through our sales process, through our stories. We're going to show them how we can do that. We're going to show them how he will be respected and how others that are in this business are respected, whether it's the leaders within our organization or other franchisees. And we're also going to show him and leverage, we're going to dangle that carrot, in other words, of how he can leave a legacy and create residual income. This is 
speaking his language. This is who he is. And when we speak that language, uh, he understands what we're talking about and becomes uh, even more curious and willing to step out into that learning zone. The fears, again, we're going to trigger the fears just enough to get them above that uh, wall and peeking over it and curious, but not so much that he actually withdraws. So we're going to show him in our marketing and in our sales uh, approach that if he doesn't do things differently, he's going to hit the corporate Feeling. Remember, he has to be the best. He has to have results. He has to be number one. So the idea that he's going to hit a corporate uh, feeling or that someone could bypass him will trigger him to do something different. It will push him out of the comfort zone. Show him that if he doesn't do something different, he doesn't come out of that comfort zone, he's not going to be able to leave a legacy behind. In fact, the legacy he might leave is that of being a coward, that of not stepping out and doing or something differently. We're also going to show him how he has little power or little success and that success and power is going to uh, depreciate over time or um, will um, not increase over time. So we're going to trigger these fears. In other words, use the stick. At the same time, we're going to dangle the carrot of how he can have these things. This will bring him out of his comfort zone, over the wall of fear, into a curiosity zone, and have him investigate the possibility of doing that. And I'm sure you can think of many examples. Uh, one that I wanted you to take a peek at when you have a moment is the Rolex Yacht um, uh, yacht, cub, excuse, yacht Cup. excuse me. And in the case of Rolex, and they actually do a great job marketing to the achiever, with everything from the black and white and simple designs uh, to uh, many times no words in their advertisement. The music is um, music that uh, an achiever can relate to. But everything is clean and simple and it's all about unique and high quality and winning. Even this Yacht Rolex uh, Cup uh, is a competition wherein the wearer of this watch uh, is just not only competing, but also winning in its heads and shoulders above uh, others. Uh, so look at this particular uh, commercial, and it will give you an idea how you want to begin to position to attract more of these. And also, if you're in the sales and development side of things, ways in which you can tell stories give examples of an achiever within your organization, being the best, being the unique, whether that's with your product or how they're providing that product or service in their individual unique market uh, places. So moving now to the third uh, value set, what we call the uh, societal value set. These are individuals that are driven by a desire to make a difference, to contribute. These are individuals where that um, knowledge means a lot to them. They absorb knowledge and they enjoy providing that knowledge back to others. They're all about self-expression. They're all about effectiveness. They're all about simplicity, creating harmony, um, and providing a means to empower others. They do that either through creativity or they do that by educating others, but they're at at a situation in their life where their joy comes from expressing themselves or helping others express their full uh, potential. So these are folks that are interested in everything from saving the planet to mentoring a child and everything in between. So this is a societal individual. So again, when we're looking at the carrot, getting them out of the comfort zone, into the curiosity zone, into I want to learn more about your business, if the societal is a good fit for you, then we want to, in our marketing and in our sales processes, provide um, things that stimulate, leverage, trigger these values. So societals are typically uh, folks interested in cause-based concepts 
or are interested in how did this business make a difference in my community? How did it change things? How did the innovation in some way transform uh, either thought processes or businesses or communities in some way? So we want to dangle the carrot and tell the stories and show them how they can contribute and have an impact. Show them your educational processes. Show them how what you have done and your company products and services have done have transformed individuals and communities or inspired communities and individuals. And show them how their other franchisees within your organization are self-expressing and or creating in some way. So these are the carrots that we're going to dangle to move them out of this comfort zone saying, I want to do that. I want to, I'm interested in doing just that. At the same time, we want to trigger subtly without pulling them back into the comfort zone, their fears. And if you recall from our last session, the societal has this huge fear of not making a difference or not having an impact. So we're going to uh, discuss that with them in our sales process and in our um, due diligence process of if they stay within that comfort zone and they don't climb those wall of fears and they don't step out and do something different, that they're not going to have an impact or the impact that their lives will have had will be minimal. Show them that they are compromising their principles or that they're out of personal integrity by not fully expressing themselves, by not fully uh, engaging their talents so they can make a difference. Show them how if they continue down this path, it will they will fall short of all that they're called to be from a spiritual or emotional perspective. Show them that they won't be able to innovate or that their learning that they've had, this wisdom that they've gained over years, will not be imparted if they stay where they are and don't get out of that comfort zone. Trigger within them a desire not just to continue to learn, but to show them if they don't do something, all of that learning, all of that wisdom, all of that experience will be for naught, that they have no way of expressing it. Show them how within your business, it's just the opposite, that they can take those years experience and that wisdom and impart it to others and make uh, a big difference. Societals have a fear of drama and they have a fear of disharmony. So trigger that. Show them where they are is disharmonious and show them there's too much drama. Show them where they're coming to is one where they get to have more personal harmony as well as harmony um, within their community and, and uh, within their families and organizations. So we're going to get them out of this comfort zone, right, by triggering fear, which triggers I want to investigate a little bit further, but we're also dangling these carrots. I love this uh, commercial, this Amazon Prime, two old friends meet for a cup of tea and discover uh, they share a problem uh, commercial. If you haven't seen it, it is a classic societal, and as you observe it, I want you to observe, once again, no words. We are speaking with imaging and camera angles and colors. There's a little bit of laughter within the, um, the Amazon Prime show, but basically it's a uh, priest and a Muslim coming together to have a cup of tea and they both discover that they have achy joints, specifically knees. And they bond further. They're already friends, but they bond further over this shared problem. This is a typical societal. That is, how do I solve the world's problems? One by one by one. The priest, in turn, helps the Muslim solve his problem, and the Muslim, in turn, helps the priest solve his problem. So this whole um, advertisement is around harmony, it's around justice, it's around contributing, it's around having an impact, a true societal um, uh, commercial that you're going to want to take a look at. 
And I want you to emulate it. Emulate it in your marketing if the societal is the right guy or gal uh, for you. And to be pondering, what did they do well? Why is it working? And if you're not an emulator and this is not, excuse me, you're not a societal and it doesn't resonate with you, uh, then ask yourself, why did that commercial not resonate with you? Does it not trigger your values? Does it not trigger uh, your pain points? Um, and that's the whole purpose of sales and marketing is to trigger our values and trigger our pain points in some way. Let's talk about the last group and then uh, we'll, we'll talk about this learning process and this curiosity process one more time. So the emulator is someone who's all about money and recognition. He's extremely trendy and innovative. Uh, he's someone that is driven by autonomy and independence. He needs flexibility. He's kind of a non-committal kind of guy. Um, he loves things that are sexy and prestigious. Uh, he likes to compete. He likes a good challenge. Uh, he tends to be someone that's very confident um, and willing to take on just about anything, but not something that makes him feel somebody is looking over his shoulder or tying him down. So in our marketing efforts to move someone from just looky-looism to um, being engaged in the process, we want to trigger these values. We want to show them that our products, our services, our company is sexy, it's prestigious, it's innovative. If indeed the emulator is the right guy for you, we need to show them how innovative we are how this is a business that they can be proud of when they go to the country club, that it's a sexy uh, business. It's a business that is cool. It's one that's filled with adventure and fun and challenge. Our advertisements and our marketing and our sales process also needs to reflect fun and challenge and adventure and be thinking about that. What process are you currently using that stimulates the emulator that creates a level of challenge and adventure in the uh, due diligence? Or are you just educating them? Are you just throwing a bunch of information at them? The emulator is not going to remain engaged if your whole process does, isn't filled with some fun and with some adventure and with some diversity and with some variety. Show them that there could be a quick return on investment and that they can leverage the resources they have. And of course, we always want to show them that they have a lot of flexibility within uh, this business that you're encouraging them to move uh, toward. And show them how there's lots of recognition within this business, within their sphere of influence by buying this particular uh, business. So you want to trigger the emulator sphere. So you're dangling the carrot with the values, right? But you're also triggering their fears. Show them. If they stay within that comfort zone and they don't go above that wall of fear, that they're going to continue to be micromanaged by a uh, jerk of a boss, right? <laughs> uh, show them that they're never going to get the kind of recognition or appreciation that they have earned or that they uh, deserve, that they will always be a minion uh, unless they break out of their comfort zone and step beyond those fears and we're showing them an opportunity to do just that. Uh, show them if they stay where they are, if they don't break out of that comfort zone, that they are going to be bored out of their gourd and not have any kind of a challenge. And you want them to be um, constantly feeling there is some challenge and we want to have them constantly engaged and not being bored in our sales process either. Show them if they stay within their comfort zone that their income is going to their income is going to be limited and they'll never reach that true potential that they know uh, that they have. And of course, show them that um, what they're doing now is really not that sexy, and it's really not that prestigious, and the titles and status and money uh, that can only be attained by being a business owner, especially a business owner with our franchise concept, uh, that they're not going to be able to attain that. So we're triggering uh, the fear. We're triggering the values at the same time. So we're inflicting pain and pleasure at the same uh, time. So another commercial to give you an idea is the Jaguar uh, commercial called Good to Bad. Fabulous emulator uh, commercial. You get this young, attractive woman out on the tarmac 
awaiting a private jet that's coming in, and she's standing next to the newest, hottest, sleekest, fastest Jaguar you could ever imagine. And you see this uh, Learjet coming in over the uh, Jaguar, and it lands, and out the door comes this uh, suave-looking gentleman who has a, a bit of mystery and intrigue and adventure around them, um, almost a James Bond kind of a feeling. Keeping in mind, the emulator is about adventure. It's about challenge. It's about looking and uh, being sexy and prestigious and successful. So this is a beautiful commercial that stimulates the emulator. When you watch it, if you are not an emulator, Notice your gut feel around it. You may actually have a negative feeling around this commercial, which would distract you or deter you from buying or being interested in this commercial. So for those of you that are attracted to this commercial, notice what values, what it's bringing up for you and triggering in you. So let's uh, backtrack a little bit. We keep talking about this curiosity and going into this learning zone and doing so uh, by getting out of that comfort zone and over the uh, walls of fear. What we haven't addressed as much, and I'd like to address in the next session but lay the foundation for today, is this learning zone, which is also a performance zone. So we've created curiosity. We now have them in that learning zone. But how do we keep them in that learning zone through that next 90 to 120 or 180 days that it takes to close that deal. I can tell you 24 years of doing this business, there is one question every future business owner is asking themselves, and that is, do I have what it takes? Inside, do I have what it takes to be a successful franchisee within that business? Then and only then, once they've been able to answer that question of do I have what it takes, are they able to consider which business? The first question has to be answered. Do I have what it takes? You know, obviously they're curious enough to go looking, but did they get an answer to that question? What makes them confident enough to get out of that comfort zone into that zone of curiosity and through that due diligence process is our ability as marketers and our ability as franchise development and franchise brokers to help them build that confidence. Now, obviously, the Zoracle tool does that to a large extent by giving your prospective franchisee some feedback as to who they are and indeed they do have what it takes to be a franchisee or a business owner. And it's more about the proper uh, fit. But you too, in your marketing and sales process, can help them answer this question. Remember, they don't move forward until that question is answered. Do I have what it takes? Keeping in mind that self-confidence, if we go to Webster's Dictionary, which I don't know if any of us even do anymore, but nonetheless, there it is, suggests that self-confidence is the courage that comes from a certain a certainty about our capabilities and goals. Goals are nothing more than our values and motives. That creates what a goal is. So to stimulate confidence, to stimulate courage, comes from a certainty, a knowing that I have the capability. If I've never grown a business before, if I know nothing about growing a business, um, how in the world am I going to feel courage and confidence around that? So we build confidence neurologically, physiologically, in our ability to uh, learn and observe and do. So we build confidence by learning, observing, and doing. So how do we do that in that uh, sales process? Keep in mind that confidence or courage comes from progressively learning and developing our capabilities. And it's much more effective when it's attached to our goals. I want you to be thinking about that. And we'll talk about this more in our next session. What are you doing 
in your marketing efforts and in your sales process that looks at the emulator or looks at the achiever or looks at the belonger or looks at the societal and says, what can I do to help them build courage so they can progress through? And it will always come back to um, learning and developing their capabilities. So there's a couple of little tips that we're going to uh, give you uh, regarding that. One is by giving them a process of progressively learning. So not just throwing them a bunch of data and documents and things of that nature, but can you create a process where they can learn how to flip that burger or do those books or build a marketing plan? Does your process include progressively learning and with each step that they learn, it moves them closer to their goals and at the same time builds their confidence? Or are you pitching and selling that whole time? What within your sales process has them step by step by step learn and build confidence? Um, there's one company that does it really well, and if you haven't observed their sales process, I recommend you reach out to Nothing Bunk Cakes. The way they do it, one of the processes they use, is not only are these uh, individuals encouraged to do on-site and get a day in the life of a franchisee kind of feel, but they also um, are encouraged to do a business plan and a presentation where at, at some place within the process of the sale, they are presenting to the staff at Nothing But Cakes their business plan. For some, this is the first time they've ever written a business plan. By the time they have finished writing that business plan and get up in front of an audience and have to present that business plan, the confidence is out the roof. Not only have they figured out how to run their own business, but they're now convincing corporate nothing but cakes that they uh, have what it takes and they thought about it. So it's a wonderful process for building confidence. The second piece, and then uh, Chris will start to take some questions here is the what's Jerry got that I don't have? Um, Some time back, we actually interviewed a franchisee that worked with one of our franchise brokers. And she was a nurse. And she one of the things she said was that someone at the hospital she was working in had started a business. And it instantly created this curiosity where she said, what does Jane have that I don't have? This compare, contrast kind of mode that went on. That alone, that level of curiosity and that compare contrast, where I'm being compared to someone I know or someone that's similar to me, gives me the confidence that I need that says Jerry doesn't have or Jane doesn't have anything that I don't have. Ask yourself in your marketing, in your sales process, are you providing this, what does Jerry have that you don't have process? Are you showing your prospective franchisee, not telling them, but showing them, not just the good franchisees, but the average Joe, where they can say, if that guy can do it, I can do it. So I'm going to encourage you to do that. So what are you doing? I want you to be starting to think about this, and we'll address more of this in our next session, that is specific to learning, which learning builds confidence. What are you doing in a process where they're learning step by step, and each time they learn something, the confidence goes up. You have another step. They're learning. Uh, they're uh, building confidence, and they're willing to take more and more risks and move through that process. Keeping in mind, each of your prospects are going to build confidence differently. They're going to want to learn uh, differently. Keeping in mind, again, that if it's an emulator, and we're helping them build confidence and courage through this learning uh, process and this curiosity process. What they want to learn about is not the same as what a belonger wants to learn about. So let the belonger learn about how to create team. Teach them or show them and build confidence that they have what it takes to build a team. That's not going to be interesting to a emulator. They're going to be interested in learning 
about variety and diversity and flexibility and how they can do this business, you know, from their bedroom or from a van or from some, uh, some island where they just have a cell phone and uh, internet connection. So keep in mind that each of your individuals are motivated differently, they learn differently, and they build courage and they build curiosity differently and ultimately have the confidence to move on. So we're going to talk more about that in our next session about this discovery and learning uh, process. Um, but for now, let's open up for some questions, Chris, okay? So we'll go ahead and see. All right. So our first question is from Tyler. So when talking about the comfort zone, he asked if there's a certain one of those profiles that's more likely to, to have a smaller comfort zone or jump out of it faster. Actually, Tyler, that's a really great question because if you call on the assessment on that last page, there uh, we mark it small, medium, large, extra large comfort zone. But you're right, the comfort zone can vary uh, in size depending on that individual. So you can imagine the belonger for just a second who values things like uh, dependability, security, stability kind of things that they're unlikely to um, have a small comfort zone, right? They're the ones that are going to stay at that pain in the rump job because they must make that mortgage. So typically a belonger will have a much larger comfort zone. Uh, and of course, we always want to get those comfort zones down. Ironically, societals also tend to have large comfort zones, not for the same reasons. You know, the comfort zone is large for the belonger because they need security and safety. The societal will have a larger comfort zone, oftentimes because they already have a lifestyle that affords them self-expression, travel, money. So if they're sitting on safety and security already, and they're already expressing themselves, whether they're doing it through art or sitting on a board. So there's usually not a whole lot of reason for a societal to go out and do something differently. They're likely already comfortable with what they're in. So the answer is look at the uh, report results, and it will uh, tell you the small, medium, large. But there is a tendency, Tyler, to um, folks that are belongers and folks that are societals to have larger comfort zones than the emulator or the achiever. All right. So Carla does a question here um, about when the next video will be posted or when this video will be posted. So we'll post this video on YouTube, our social media channels within the next day or so. You will also all be sent as being part of me and you'll also all be sent a recording of this um, so that you have it. So our next question um, says, besides the day in the life and the business plan, uh, what other types of learning opportunities can you suggest that have a great impact um, and building confidence in that? So great, a great question again. And we'll address more of this in our next session as we get into the learning. If any of you have some that you are currently using, please send it to us so we can use them as examples. The Nothing But Cake example is a good one. Many times it's the first time somebody has written a business plan. Many times it's the first time someone's got up and presented in front of someone. So, so the learning uh, process was teaching them how to build a business plan, teaching them how to speak in public, teaching them how to network in the case of nothing fun cakes where you're out networking. So you're going to want to look at your own franchise system and ask yourself, what does it take to run your business successful? Is it that I got to be great at sales? Is it that I have to be great at marketing? Is it that I have to be really good at building teams, managing people? Is it an operational or finance business? Then I recommend that your learning process in, in that 90 days, 120 days, are processes where you build confidence in those areas that have the greatest financial impact. So. If I am looking at a retail business that is highly operational and requires strong technical and financial skills, 
then the uh, exercises or the learning experiences that I'm going to encourage my prospective franchisee to go through are around can I manage inventory? Teach me how to manage inventory. Show me how that's done. Take me to a location. Show me how to count that in inventory. Show me how to look at the expiration dates and plan a budget or plan a marketing plan so that inventory gets moved quickly. So look at what the business is that requires it to be successful and then create learning experiences that show them they are good at that or they can learn that. Don't just tell them, have them experience it, not just from observing someone, which is one way to learn, obviously, to compare, contrast, you know, I look like Joe kind of thing, but actually have them do it. And the inventory example is just one of many uh, examples. Keep in mind that it's specific to your business and specific to the buyer motives or the values are the uh, belongers, achievers, societal emulators. I'm sorry, Chris, I probably talked too long there. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so our next question um, asks if a good review process for the webinar review, watch the commercials uh, we put in there, um, and then review the slides related to the four types. Is I, that a good way to review it? I think that's a great way uh, to review it. So good point um, that you made. Uh, because this is a uh, series, it's building on one after another after another. So if you missed the first couple of sessions, you may have felt you were thrown into the deep end of the pool this particular uh, time. Uh, so please do go back. And as, as uh, um, I don't know the name, oh, Carlos, as Carlos mentioned, go back and watch some of the commercials. I gave you some in the last couple of sessions. Craig? Greg. Greg. Thanks, Greg. Um, thanks, Greg, um, is to look at those commercials and look at them from your own perspective. Does this commercial trigger curiosity? Does this commercial trigger fear? Does this commercial trigger me to learn more and investigate? If not, why is it not doing it? Is it because I am not the ideal uh, prospect? I am not the persona that that commercial is going after. And then look at another commercial. Does this one trigger my values? Does it trigger my fears? Does it trigger me to investigate? Does it trigger me to want to learn and step out and engage in uh, whatever that product or service is? And if not, why not? Why is it not triggering me? Notice when nothing happens and when something happens. Take some notes. This triggered me because this and this happened. It triggered me because it stimulated the emotion of excitement or fear or disappointment or whatever it is. Begin to write it down and also go back to the other um, webinars. And, and we'll start to pull all these pieces together, but it is a building process, Chris. All right. So Carlos asked, can we shrink their comfort zones? Going back to talking about how what we discussed in the beginning of the presentation. Right. So the answer is, Yes. In fact, that's kind of one of our number one goals as a marketer and as a salesperson is to shrink that comfort zone. The smaller the comfort zone, the faster the decision. The bigger the comfort zone, the forever it takes <laughs> to, to make a decision. So we shrink it by inflicting pain, and we inflict pain by showing your prospective franchisee here are your values for the emulator. It's challenge and adventure and fun and success. We, we shrink the comfort zone by triggering those values in a negative way, by inflicting pain. You're never going to have the flexibility. You're always going to work 50 hours a week. Um, we trigger pain by triggering the values in a negative way, and we shrink the comfort zone by dangling the biggest carrot we can possibly dangle, which again, I'll write back to those same values of uh, what that individual has. Thirdly, we combine those two by triggering their fears. And the fears, go back to session two, we talked about that. The fear of not leaving a legacy. The fear of not being the best. The fear of being irresponsible. The fear of um, letting somebody down. 
we trigger them to come out of their comfort zone and shrink that comfort zone by triggering their fears, uh, adding lots of carrots, and adding lots of uh, sticks all at the same time that shrinks the comfort zone and steps them into a curiosity uh, zone. So we're doing this all at the same time, right, Chris? We're, yes. We're, we're creating learning experiences, we're creating curiosity, we're triggering fear, we're dangling carrots, we're hitting them with a stick all at the same time. It's not like we do one first and the next one and the next one. It's all done uh, simultaneously. Okay. Of course, Carla, it's our pleasure. Um, so Greg had a follow-up question. Uh, so relating the commercials and the applications is to yourself first and then branch out into what you think, what type your client is. That's what I would do, yeah. Greg. You know, we can, we tend to learn better when we can, can we because we know ourselves best, right? I can recognize instantly that this commercial is speaking to me, right? I'm a societal, Greg, as an example. And any time a societal video comes up, I literally, my heart quickens. I will sometimes have tears to my eyes. I will feel anxious in many ways. And um, so it really pulls. Like the one we just showed you with the Muslim and the, uh, the Catholic priest. And that literally moved me in some way. And when I looked at the Jaguar one, did nothing for me. In fact, it was like, oh, that, that's so, it felt manipulative, right? So we know ourselves. So by looking at these various commercials, you can see which one's triggering you. But note why. Why is it triggering you? Go back to what are my values? What's being triggered? Is it my fears that are being triggered? And then we can begin to apply it to our prospective uh, franchisee and to our marketing and to our sales uh, process. All right, so it looks like that's all the questions we had for now. Um, if you think of more, please always feel free to email us for more than happy to answer questions. Um, like I said before, you guys will be receiving a recording of this in your email. We'll also be posting in our social media channels um, through Facebook, on LinkedIn, Twitter. If you don't follow us there, go ahead and do that. And we look forward to speaking with you guys again on July 13th for the fourth part in the series. Thank you so much.